This video is a quick video to talk about the relationship between Unicode and UTF-8. To give a little bit of context, the way the computer stores everything is as numbers. So when we want it to store characters, it stores them as numbers. So we need a pattern, an encoding, for how each number represents a character. There are a number of ways that we map the characters to integers. Historically, the common one of these was called ASCII, and it mapped the characters that were used in English and in the punctuation related with English. ASCII maps those characters to the numbers between 0 and 127. They fit in one byte, and that's going to be important as we go forward into Unicode. When computers became more widespread, Clearly, just having the English characters is insufficient, and that led to the development of Unicode. So Unicode includes the mapping for 143,000 characters. Uh, that includes scripts for many languages, uh, for control characters, and for emoticons. You can see up in the left the emoticon that is mine, the female mage. It's important to note that when they designed the mappings for Unicode, they were very careful to make sure that the values for the characters that had already been defined in ASCII stayed the same. So you can look at an ASCII table and see what the Unicode value for those particular characters are. If you want the Unicode value for other characters, you'll have to find a Unicode table to give you their values. Unicode also includes things that are different between different languages. For example, it includes instructions for how to combine characters, like those in Korean, where they make one syllable out of a sequence of characters. Uh, Unicode can also specify the direction of the text for languages that read either left to right or top to bottom. And then finally, every time you have an integer, you have to think about how are you going to store that integer? Unicode has a number of ways that it can choose to store the integer, uh, UTF-8, UTF-16, and there are a bunch of others as well. So UTF-8 is a variable length encoding. That means that some values will be stored in shorter lengths and some values will require more bytes to encode them. So if you look at this table, the values between 0 and 7f, which is 127, get encoded in one byte. The values between 80 in hex and 7fff get encoded in two bytes, where the first byte starts with 110 and the second byte starts with 10. So now that you can see how to read this table, let's look at a couple of examples of how Unicode characters get encoded into UTF-8. For our first example, let's look at how you would encode the value 3a into UTF-8. 3a in binary is 0111010. Because it is between 0 and 7f, it will be encoded in one byte that starts with a 0 and then has the encoding of the value for the rest of that byte. So the UTF-8 encoding of 3a is 3a. Now there's one really important thing to notice about this. 3a is the colon in ASCII, and you'll notice because they kept the same encoding in Unicode as they had in ASCII, so a 3a means colon in Unicode, and because they have used UTF-8 encoding, that 3a got encoded in one byte, just like it used to in ASCII. So UTF-8 and Unicode are backwards compatible to ASCII. Things encoded in ASCII look exactly the same when they are encoded in UTF-8 Unicode. For our second example, let's look at how UTF-8 would encode the hex value 232. Because that value is between 80 and 7FFF, we're going to use row 2 of the UTF-8 table. 
That row of the table is encoding things that are bigger than seven bits and less than or equal to 11 bits. So the 232 is gonna get encoded as 11 bits. When we turn it into UTF-8, the first byte is gonna start with 110 and have the first five bits of the value. And then the second bit is the second byte is going to start with one zero and have the last six bits of our value. So two three two in hex is going to get UTF eight encoded into C eight B two. As our final example, let's look at how you would encode the Unicode value one F nine D nine, which just happens to be the Unicode value for my Unicode character. Because it is bigger than FFFF, it's going to get record encoded using the last row of the table. And the last row of the table encodes things that are 17 bits long. So we convert to binary in 17 bits. The first byte of the encoding is going to start with 11110 and have our top three bits. From there, every byte is going to ha start with 10 and encode the next six bits of our number. And so my character is going to get UTF 8 encoded as F09F799. So the bottom line is that Unicode specifies a mapping of characters to integers that covers many languages. In addition, it allows you to specify details of the scripts, like things like the direction that the text should go or how characters get combined in particular languages. And then finally, because it has integers, we have to talk about how is it gonna store those integers. One of the ways that Unicode can choose to store integers is with a UTF-8 encoding. Unicode encoded with UTF-8 encoding is very common because it is backwards compatible with ASCII. 